Good morning, welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. And I can tell you we've got our lineup of topics today, so you better go and grab yourself a cuppa because today is going to be well, probably about the normal long length, to be honest, about 20 minutes. Right, number one, today is a flying day and it's going to be a day of maidens. You'll find out what those maidens are very shortly. Oh, I've got apologies for you again. Uh, we also have a note around laminating EPP foam as well. Uh, it's Hobby King's graphene, whatever. Uh, Reptile S800, the Sky Shadow is here and it's been built and we'll have a quick overview to it as well. We'll cover, well, to be honest, we're gonna cover the things which I don't like because that's a lot easier than covering the things which I do like. Uh, and oh yeah, which model won the vote? Make sure you hang around for this one uh, because that kind of determines what's going to get built this weekend. Oh yeah, and I also have a pox here as well. Uh, honestly, it was batshit crazy yesterday. Uh, Facebook group went boom uh, with the excitement around the uh, sky shadow. And I really didn't fancy pouring more petrol on the fire and starting another conversation. So yeah, that one did it. Anyway, we'll get to that in a bit. Right, uh, number one, today is a flying day and it, today is a day of maidens. We have the C1 Chaser, uh, which I've set up for FPV. We've got the Runcam Owl on there. We've got the video transmitter out on one wing. We've got an L9R on the opposite wing. You can kind of tell what I'm setting that one up for. Uh, and it's got a vector, Eagle Tree Vector set up inside. Uh, that's going to be a very curious one today because it's going to be to, it's going to be curious if she can take the wing load in of having a 5,200 uh, mini outfit pack inside of it. That's going to be very curious. We also have the and I'm pointing to this because it's already been built. Uh, the reptile S800 Sky Shadow, her maiden, will be today, and. Possibly the Hornet flying wing as well, which uh, I yes, I've got that as an option in here So yeah a day of maidens today. Also the wind conditions look absolutely brilliant So uh, we will be flying in and out of some trees assuming that it doesn't start raining out there today Now topic number two is apologies again. I uh, yesterday was a very very busy day especially like having a build and trying to do normal work at the same time uh, so I am massively behind with the comments which you're leaving on the video episodes which I'm putting up on YouTube. Now, I always knew this was going to be a challenge at some points and it's come a lot earlier than what I've expected. I do have an idea on how to tackle this challenge uh, head on. Uh, so if you've left me a question and I've not got back to you, it's not because I don't like you or I don't love you. It's just I've just been busy doing other things. So an open request to any of you watching this. If you do see a question which has been left on a video uh, and you feel that you can answer, please just answer it. Okay? Do your best. Even if you say that I think this is about right, but I'm not sure, that's better than no answer at all. Uh, and also, this really does highlight the point of the Facebook group because... The Facebook group, that is extremely active, and I'll put a link to the Facebook group uh, underneath this episode today, uh, is because there's a huge wealth uh, of information in there, and it's a, it's a genuinely nice place to be. Uh, other pilots helping other pilots, having a chit-chat, having a laugh. Uh, we get the, the odd few unscheduled landing uh, kit parts uh, left in there from time to time. Uh, but it's a great place just to, it's like the after party for the RC Coffee Chat. That's probably the best way of explaining it. So I will put a link to the uh, Facebook group underneath this video for you. Just hit the join button in the top right hand corner and join in if you want. Uh, or just come in and say hello. That would be really cool. Right, number topic number three, a note around laminating EPP foam. So I don't know if you know this, is that there's different types of foam which your models come in. You've got EPP, which is this stuff. I don't know if you can see that's got quite a, like a rough texture to it. If I rub my finger on it, you'll hear it on there. Whereas EPO foam, like the Wing Wing Z84, is like a molded foam. Uh, the molded foam EPO uh, will take laminate and spray paint and most coverings very, very well. 
whereas EPP will take paint exceptionally well, but it doesn't take laminate that well, uh, and you need to cheat, or you need like a medium between the two, which is that you need a can of that or similar, which this is 3M Super 90. Uh, this can actually did cost me 15 quid, and I had to buy it from Germany. Uh, uh, and you'll need to look it up on eBay or Amazon or somewhere like that. It's not cheap. What you can do is use uh, carpet spray, which you can buy from Screwfix or a local hardware store, uh, and you spray that on the model first, let that go off for about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, and then you put your laminate in on top. And what that then means is that the laminate covering, I'm having to pull quite tight on that, it will help the laminate stick to EPP. Again, that's vitally important because for the Hornet FPV wing, which I've been working on uh, recently, I want to put a covering on this because the weather's absolute crap here uh, and it's going to get really muddy really quickly. So I will be laminating this one today uh, and that does mean that I will give her a dose of that Super, 7, Super 90 uh, on there. Uh, and then I will give her a nice little lamination as well, clear laminate on top. And I always get asked this, uh, it's 75 micron laminate, uh, which I bought off eBay and it costs like 14 quid for about 20 years worth. Uh, oh, and also those of you wanting to see what the bottom's like, that's the design which I've gone for. Super simple. Uh, and I just used uh, different size tape to go on there. And that tape, that thinner tape was actually the tape which came with the bonsai, you know, the really crap stuff, which doesn't actually stick to the model. Uh, is that that's the tape which I used over there. So I kept that reel uh, and it came in really handy uh, and that is super bright. And you, I'm looking on the camera, You w that looks bright on the camera, but I can assure you it's brighter in real life. So we'll put her to one side. That one's gonna be mad. Uh, so that was my note on laminating. Oh, Hobby King, uh, it is graphing day. Now this page has been taken off their website and it'll probably appear back there later. I uh, thought we'd give you a heads up, couple of different graphene batteries, and I will check the planes to see if there are any new models today, which there are none just yet. So, yeah. So, anyway, uh, what else we got? Reptile S800 build. Now, to give you a heads up, there was a unboxing video for everybody in the Facebook group. Again, one of the reasons why you should be in the Facebook group is because you will get uh, episodes like that quickly done uh, so that you get the first glimpse on a model. I did then later on publish it on YouTube. Uh, I do have a full version of the unboxing on, on the Reptile S800. Uh, that will be live later this morning. In fact, if you want to go and watch it now, again, I'll put a link to that and the Facebook group uh, in the video description underneath there. Here, you'll need to press the, like, the little show more link uh, to get the extra show notes which come with every single episode. Uh, so that one is out, uh, well, is available and will be published on YouTube later today. Now, I thought it would be a better idea for me to share the things which I don't like about this model. So, number one, here she is, she's been built. Uh, all in all, if it took me about 90 minutes to build her, okay, that was everything in, including prepping the servos, uh, soldering up the wire and loom for the FPV, um, the ESC and the other bits and bobs took about 90 minutes. Now, if you just use hot glue, then that would have gone a lot quicker. But to be honest, I don't use hot glue on my models, or I very rarely do. Uh, and then the reason why I don't use hot glue is because you may see the seams down here is that I'm using goop glue on here because I want a super strong joint. Hot glue is okay but this is my model and I bought this out of my own dosh and keep that in the back of your mind when you see people building these models really quickly and just jabbing the hot glue in because they're just trying to get the model built and flown as soon as possible. Uh, whereas in my case, uh, I actually do want to spank this one around the air uh, and as we saw, it's super rigid foam. So anyway, the things which I don't like and I do need to go and check my notes. Uh, the little board which we had with it uh, is not a stabilizer. It is actually a Beck board. So in the kit version, you only get a Beck, which to be frankly honest, is a complete waste of time. Don't bother with that, just chuck it in the bin or to save the bits you want and chuck the rest in the bin. Completely pointless. Uh, the Hele uh, Elevon hinges, do not like those. 
uh, one of these split, I can't remember which one it was now, one of them split like just by me moving it backwards. So you'll see that there's some tape on here. That's Blenderm tape. Again, there's a video uh, or how to episode on my YouTube channel which shows you how to apply that the right way. Brilliant stuff and you can buy that off Hobby King or eBay or somewhere like that. Super cheap, well, relatively cheap and works absolutely brilliantly. Uh, if you don't have any Blenderm tape, normal cellar tape will get you out of the brain on that but I didn't like the look after one split almost straight away my trust in those hinges went out of the window what else have we got the receiver bay is a bit of a cram fix in there a uh, little tip for you again you'll find this out in the build episode when I get around to editing it uh, is that I did make a little uh, tape hatch in there so that I can open it up on the flight line uh, also I didn't like this hinge uh, there was no hinge on here so I've put a piece of tape across the front as well. So it's now hinged, so it's nice and easy on the flight line. Uh, what else have I got on there? Oh yeah, the supplied little clevis holders, those little things just there. Some of you will tell me what the correct name on them, the little adjusters, uh, absolute crap in the kit. Really didn't like them at all. Uh, and also you will need to drill out the control horn to two millimeters with a two millimeter uh, drill bit so that they actually fit. Okay, and that's both for the ones which I used and also the ones which are supplied. Yeah, I didn't like those at all. Uh, what else have we got on there? Oh yeah, I've had to add extra nose weight uh, to the nose to get it to balance. Now another little tip for you, you'll find this in the build video. I have put two little dots of hot glue underneath uh, and, well there's no battery at the moment, but I can now easily balance this one in my hands without trying to look underneath and things like that because there's two little blobs of hot glue now. Let me just go and put it down a moment because I do have some photos here in the background uh, so that you can see what's going on. Oh, actually, just share that one with you. Yeah, I spanked a 1.3S uh, battery within 20 milliamp years of its life again. <laughs> that must have been a good flight. Uh, what else have we got on here? So, yeah, even with a Turnigy A-Spec 2.2 battery, 3S, which is a fair old size battery, uh, is that I did find that I needed to put that amount of lead down the side of the camera. And that is with a GoPro replacement camera, a Turnigy 2K camera. Uh, that is with that camera uh, in the front as well. So if you're going to be flying this model without a camera in the front, you are definitely going to need to stick some lead uh, underneath that black cover. Okay, it, you definitely need some weight in the front of there. Um, now, yeah, it kind of gets hidden. Well, you couldn't even see it on that one. So uh, I've just tucked it down the side of the camera. So do be very, very aware that it's quite likely you need to add some weight. Now, part of the reason why we need to add some weight is because I am using the standoffs on the back uh, and I am using the race spec um, SE 2205 DYS 2300 KV uh, motor on the back. Oh, and those of you, uh, which remember a previous episode, you may be wondering, oh, I've seen that motor before. And yes, you have. That was the motor which was on the back of the Micro Sky Munter. Oh, that's another maiden today. Yeah, somebody fitted an NTM 2836 3000 KV motor to the back of the Sky Munter. That's another maiden today. Uh, and to be honest, I think I better go and take myself a black bin liner because I don't think that, I, I genuinely do feel that that motor is going to blow that tail fin off uh, the back of that model. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be an eventful day today. So actually it's a day of four maidens almost. Yeah, it's going to be bonkers, absolutely bonkers. So yeah, that's all the bad points on there. The biggest plus point which I can tell you about this model is that that black EPO foam, you've seen me smash that in the desk. And if you haven't seen the uh, that full version yet or you haven't seen the uh, one for the Facebook group, I don't hold back. That is full bang, bang, bang on the desk. Very robust. So yeah, no need to laminate that model. Uh, you would have to really rag that into a tree to cause some damage to that wing. And uh, I'll do my best. I'll do my best, but uh, we'll see what happens with that one. Right, the last topic which we've got is which 
model won the vote. And this is one of the pieces which I just wanted to cover uh, is, or actually, before we get to that, uh, I did put a post in the Facebook group. Uh, I can't remember if I said this in this episode or not. Um, yeah, yesterday the Facebook group absolutely exploded uh, around the reptile and I did have the FMS uh, 540, which has been sent to me from uh, Gearbest for review. That did arrive yesterday. Now, I really didn't want to chuck like more petrol in the fire in the Facebook group yesterday because it was so busy in there. Uh, so and you can see Tyler's just woken up there as well because uh, it really was batshit crazy. So if you want to join the after party uh, and if you've got questions or comments or just want to join in with everybody else, the Facebook group is the place to be and I'll put the link to that in the video description. Uh, so yes, which? one one well which model one now this is really really interesting i need to get that excel spreadsheet open because i had to sit here and count each one this morning uh absolutely crazy so i before we get to which model one it was actually very curious to find out which kind of pilot you are if that makes sense so i found the hardcore okay and the hardcore, I know who you are. Uh, and those are the ones which voted for the FG36. Uh, brilliant model, and you're probably wired very similar to me, which is let's spank the nuts off a model. Uh, and uh, yeah, I am really looking forward to building that one. We also had a very sensible bunch uh, in the votes as well. Uh, and that was around the 48. Now, the 48 is... A is number one it's a much bigger wing it's a 48 inch wing would make a fantastic camera ship and also uh, will be able to cope with the weather and that's why I was saying about the sensible bunch a lot of you work that out as well uh, again probably prompted by my comments uh, about the 48 uh, is because because of the bigger wingspan it can cope with more severe wind conditions or less than ideal uh, wind conditions uh, hence that would probably be a very good model to get built, considering the time of the year we're in right now. Then we get to the Wombat and the Twin Zoo. Now, they are very similar looking models, but one's got two motors on the front and the other one's got a motor on the back. Now, yeah, they're both going to ball. In fact, they're all going to be mental by the time I finished with them. So let's go, let's go to the third place. Now you may be wondering, Matt, there's four models. Why do you only have a third place? It's because we've got a tie on third place. The tie is between the FG36 and the 4D8. It's a neck and neck tie. We had six votes each uh, for those two models. In second place, and I feel like I should pause for suspense and take a sip of coffee. Don't you just hate that when they do that on the TV? Anyway, no, in, in second place, we have, and there was a lot of votes. There were 17 votes for this model. It was the Twin Zoo. So the Twin Zoo definitely does look popular, and that then means we have, and we have an outright winner by a country mile. So the Twin Zoo had 17 votes. The Wombat had a massive 24 votes. So if you voted for the Wombat, your prayers have been answered, uh, and I will start to build the Wombat this weekend. Now, I have to be fair to the guys over at Team Legit. They did send me the 48 and the Twin Zoo for review. Now, this is where I do have to stick my practical hat on which is that I do need to be Mr. Sensible, uh, Mr. Sensible, and I do feel that perhaps as much as I want to do the mental twin zoo, okay, and as much as I'd love, personally love, to do the FG36, because remember, it was the FG36, which I also bought out of my money, uh, I'd love to get that model uh, up in the sky. I have to be fair uh, to Team Legit and go and do the 4DA afterwards. So next model to be built, will be the Wombat, and that will get done this weekend, assuming that I don't end up flying, which is quite possible. Uh, so the twins, uh, sorry, the Wombat will get built first, and then next it will be the 48. 
Uh, and for the reasons which I've just mentioned, I feel it's fair uh, for the team over at Team Legit because they did send me the 48 uh, for review. And also, again, those six of you which had your practicality hats on, I do believe that it will make a fantastic wing for this time of the year. And again, for you, the viewer, that also means fantastic news because what better way to use a flying wing is to take more video footage of you flying behind of another flying wing. Uh, oh, and that brings me on to a little bit of good news. That turned up this morning. That's the Firefly Q6. Apparently, it's a 4K camera. Well, this be Bob Blunt here. It's going to be an interpolated, interpolated one. Uh, but, yeah, that's turned up. We'll give that one a punt today as well. So, plenty of uh, video footage coming up in the future. That's for sure. Uh, and that 48, I really am looking forward to uh, getting up in the air because I know it's going to be rock solid up there uh, in the sky. But, with all that said, we do have an outright winner and it's going to be the Wombat. Now, I am looking for you to give me a nickname for the wombat. So a word before the wombat or a word behind the wombat. Help me name this model because mental wombat has got, doesn't have a ring to it. So can you think of uh, an extra name which we can call this wombat? Uh, and I'll do my best to, again, weather, assuming it's gonna be not gonna be a flying weekend, uh, I will do my best to get that built over the weekend or at least get it done in there and you'll get progress updates as soon as I, well, in these RC coffee chats on, a, on her progress. So yeah, help me name her. Uh, it's going to be bonkers. I remember I did buy the power package to go with that one as well. Uh, she's pretty much a bit of foam, a bit of carving. The only thing which I can really screw up on that build is not get the alignment uh, of the booms correct on the model. That's the only danger point. That's the only thing which could be screwed up uh, in that model uh, is the alignment of the, um, uh, what you may call it, of the booms. So I will be using a Sharpie and making sure that we get them all exactly 90 degrees or parallel to the main cut down the middle as well. Uh, that's the only thing which I feel that can be screwed up uh, on that build. Uh, and that's the only, yeah. Besides that, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, I don't know what I'm going to do with colouring for that model yet. Um, I may put some of that bright yellow spray on there. I may even get the hex template out for it too. For the Wombat. I genuinely don't know what I'm going to do with the colouring scheme on the Wombat. I could go for a painted underside light, a similar setup to this. Uh, maybe a different colour because there's many colours in a rainbow, isn't there? Uh, but I could go with a similar... Um, design like this maybe a bigger hexagon pattern for example but i will then laminate on top of it and the, if i then laminate on top of it that does mean that i could put a skin on it at a later date if i uh, so wish so i don't even know i'm there you go look there's me already thinking about spanking it around the sky and the finishing of it is ready uh, and i really do like those hexagons i really do so i've talked too much this episode's run on a little bit longer than what i was expecting but let me just quickly recap. Uh, today is a flying day. We have the C1 Chaser Maiden for FPV. We have the Reptile uh, S800 Sky Shadow being made in today. Uh, we've got possibility of that Hornet being made in today. And we have that psychopathic Sky Munter, uh, which is going out for a Maiden with a 3000 KV. And it's got a tri-blade propeller on the back. That goes out for a Maiden as well. Apologies on the lack of comments. Remember, if you see uh, someone's left a question and you feel that you can answer or fancy a stab at having a, having a go at answer, please do it. Genuinely, please dive in for that. Uh, and also, if you would like to join in with the after party, uh, which is in the Facebook group, I'll put a link to the Facebook group uh, in the video description for you. Uh, and there is a wealth of information available to you. Uh, the reason for that is there are a lot of really cool people in that group. So yeah, come and join in the after party after the RC Coffee Chats. Uh, and I'll put a link to the group in the video description. We had the note around about EPP foam and laminating it, which is I'm personally using 3M Super 90. But that is the expensive option. You can just use carpet spray glue. Uh, instead which is a million times cheaper 
uh, whatever about Hobby King. Uh, Reptile S800 build, the build episode, the link to that build episode is in the video description, even though it's not actually yet been published to the public uh, on YouTube, that will go out later today for you. Uh, so do check the video description for that. Uh, we went for all the things which I don't like about that, that model. Um, on the flip side, that's me picking fault with it. And remember, I bought that one out of my own cash, so I'm being brutal about it. Uh, that, that aside, the only real major concern here is that extra bit of lead being having to be added to the front. Um, I didn't expect that to happen, but we don't know until we go and fly it how she handles in the sky. I may be able to remove that lead. Uh, and a big tip for you, uh, if you are doing a maiden on any model, for goodness sake, if you're in any doubt, stick more lead in the nose. Uh, and if you still don't think you've put a lead, enough lead in the nose, put more lead in the nose because it is a million times easier to fly a model which is nose heavy because you're having to pull back on the elevator all the time uh, compared to a model which is tail heavy and just wags around in the sky and is an absolute nightmare to land. Nose heavy every day of the week. You can sort out the CFG in later flights. Uh, and yeah, which model won? Yeah, the hardcore out there voted for the FG36. Brilliant. Uh, those sensible ones out there voted for the 48, which will get built second for those reasons mentioned. Uh, and then it really was a kick up between that Wombat and the Twin Zoo. But a Wombat kicked the Twin Zoo's at, uh, ass and uh, that one will get built in the in the near future as well. I'm sure the Twin Zoo will get built because it does look mental. Uh, but that aside, the Wombat was the clear winner. And remember, any naming ideas for the Wombat, please let me know uh, in the comment section underneath this episode. She does need to get named, so maybe a word before, maybe a word after, or something we, which we can nickname her. Uh, that would be really, really cool. So with that said, from myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining me for today's RC Coffee Chat. We had a lot to cover, and I think my coffee is uh, now stone cold. Mm. Not as cold as I expected. So thank you ever so much for joining me today. I'm going. I need to get some more batteries on charge because today is a flying day. Yay. Brilliant. So I'm going. Yeah, I'm off. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Cheerios. <laughs>